This morning, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to just go with me. Uh, John chapter number 1. John chapter number 1. I'm excited to share the Word with you today. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start out sitting. We'll see. Uh, but uh, I, I really feel like the Lord would have us to hear this morning something that I believe will encourage you uh, on this Sunday morning. And, uh, but in John chapter number 1, as you grab your Bible, beginning in verse number 45, I'm just going to read 45 through 51, and we're going to lay a foundation. And I'm going to talk to you this morning about the unexpected place. If the Lord would help me, I feel like I've got a few things that I really would like to share uh, concerning this this morning. But in John chapter number 1, beginning in verse number 45, we read the following. It says, Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no gall. And Nathanael saith unto him, Whence now knowest thou me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. What a powerful passage of Scripture this morning that I want to share with you. We find when you really look at this, there's much that we could talk about, but I want to focus in in John chapter 1, verse 45 through 51 this morning on simply the words of Nathaniel. Philip is coming, and he simply tells him he's got good news. He says, we have found him. We found the Messiah. We found the one that Moses has wrote about, the prophets have wrote about. And he said his name is Jesus of Nazareth. He is the son of Joseph. And he was simply uh, excited about what was transpiring at this moment. But then Nathaniel, we find, he just responds by saying, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And I want us to keep that in mind as we go through Scripture this morning just for a few moments. I believe that it is in this time in history uh, that we are watching many things unfold. And I know some of the things that we're seeing brings a little bit of anxiety and maybe even a little bit of fear tries to get upon us as we try to navigate through where we are today uh, in this very moment of time in history. Our world definitely has been invaded by evil. We know that. And uh, that should not catch us off guard this morning, but it does uh, disturb us. And today we know that darkness seems to be everywhere. And we are witnessing our children uh, be overran and indoctrinated by those that support everything that we stand against as men and women of faith, uh, men and women that believe the Bible to be the roadmap for our lives. But unfortunately, even in recent years, the platform of the church has been infiltrated uh, by some of the same mindset that we see in the world. And as the platform has been infiltrated and has become nothing more than a place of false teaching and indoctrination as well, uh, we know this, that there must be an awakening in this very moment of time. And we know that while there needs to be repentance on many levels, uh, the first place that needs to be dealt with in this hour really is the church. And I'm not talking down on the church. Those of you that know me know that we love the church. And, uh, uh, but we know this, that the church world is actually in a place where it has lost its way. And uh, the church actually in this moment of time in history, in this nation, for the very first time in its history, honestly, has been viewed as no longer essential in this very moment of time, while the places of darkness is viewed as been essential. So this morning, while it appears that more things are upside down than right side up, I stand here before you full of hope this morning. 
And I want to share some of that with you, why I believe that. But the first thing that I would say to you right where you are this morning is that we are serving a God that is faithful. Not just sometimes, but all the time. No matter where you find yourself, God is faithful faithful. Uh, we know that David writes Psalms 23 in a very dark time in his life. His son has just passed away, and it seems like everything has went opposite of what he wanted and requested. But when you read Psalms 23, a very familiar passage of Scripture, David has gotten up, washed his face, uh, closed himself, sat down at a table, and began to eat. And people didn't really know what he was doing. He's like, you, you should be mourning now. But he said, listen, he said, the Lord, he is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And he said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. What he was saying is this, in this most difficult time, I have found that God is faithful. I want to say to you this morning, you might find yourself in a very dark place today, but know this, God is faithful. He didn't bring us this far to leave us, but he, but he is going to be with us all the way even to the end. <coughs> Excuse me this morning. We find today that not only is God faithful, but uh, we've got to stop and we've got to self-examine our lives and say, are we really believing and trusting that he is faithful? Because today a large majority of individuals are putting their hope and their trust uh, into everything other than the one that is able to deliver them. Can I tell you this morning uh, that Jesus Christ is still our deliverer? He is still our source and he's still our strength. And uh, many in our culture today are searching for answers in many different places and in many different avenues. Uh, and much of that, unfortunately, is due to the reputation uh, of the church in recent years. Uh, when many, uh, when they hear the word church, unfortunately, uh, they do not think of Christ. They do not think of the redemption uh, that comes through the sacrifice of Calvary. Uh, but immediately, people are taken back in their mind to the latest scandal or the latest moral failure, or they are taken back to a very unpleasant experience uh, that they may have had, which leads people today with this question in mind. Well, can anything good uh, come out of there? And unfortunately, we have to go beyond uh, that may be just the status quo to begin to get people to once again see that there is something more to the church uh, than just failures and disappointments. Uh, and this morning, uh, for a few moments, I want to take us on a little journey uh, concerning what Nathaniel said. I have preached for years and said this for years, uh, that there is no substitute for integrity. But if there has ever been a time for you and I as men and women of faith to make sure that we retain our integrity, it is now. There is in this season three things that need to be safeguarded, and I've preached on this multiple times over the years. Uh, but we need to make sure that we are safeguarding our purity, our integrity, as well as our anointing. You will never have anointing without, first of all, having integrity, and you'll never have integrity unless you have purity. And the only way we can walk with purity, integrity, and anointing is if we walk in relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, religion does not bring those things to us. Uh, but we find that Nathaniel, uh, he dealt with this uh, in a very unique manner when Philip comes and begins to talk to him concerning Jesus. Uh, Philip said, we found him. We found the Messiah. We found the one that Moses wrote about. We found the one that the prophets wrote about. And he goes on and he begins to speak to Nathaniel. He says, I want you to come and see what we have found. This man, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, the son of Joseph, uh, he's the one. But Nathaniel, notice this, Nathaniel was a man that had a pure heart. The Lord himself said that as if you read through what we read together this morning, he said there is an Israelite indeed that has no gall in him, meaning this, Nathaniel, there's a man that has a pure heart, uh, meaning this, he, the Lord himself saw Nathaniel as a man of purity, 
uh, he saw him as a man of integrity, uh, and, and he saw him in a manner like there is, there is a man that has a heart that he's getting ready to experience me in a, and see me in a very great manner because of the condition of who he is. Uh, but Nathaniel, even though he was pure in heart, he said this, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Uh, and, and it was because that Nazareth had a reputation. And the question today that I'm asking is that, that the world is asking rather is can anything good come out of the church? Uh, Nathaniel, knowing the reputation of Nazareth, uh, he said there's really nothing great coming out of there. He wasn't been mean-spirited about it, but he was just been honest. Uh, he, he knew that, Nath that Nazareth was just a little small community about 12 miles southwest of the Sea of Galilee. He knew that there was just a place that was about... Uh, historians, uh, historians tell us maybe two to four hundred people. Uh, most of that was just a few families and extended families. Uh, it was a place that was very uh, enriched in, uh, in, in conservative mindset according to history. Uh, it was a time and a place where tradition was very much a part of their culture. Uh, those that was raised there, they was thought to be uh, those that was able to really read well because they knew that it was important for them to have an education. Uh, but based on everything that was going on around Nazareth, uh, there, there wasn't much to talk about. Uh, it is said and believed that really the only reason you would go to Nazareth at this time was if you had a, a, a group of uh, animals with you that needed to be watered because there was a well that was there and, uh, and it, it was a, a place of good water. But outside of that, there was no major industry there. There was, uh, there was nothing uh, that had uh, neon signs flashing saying, come to Nazareth because it wasn't real attractive. And, and they said, is, is anything good able to come out of there? But Philip said, won't you come and see for yourself? Come and, uh, come and see this man because there's something unique about him. And we know that outside of this small town of about 10 acres, it didn't really seem to have much to offer compared uh, to the city surrounding it that was busy with new construction and all kinds of commerce uh, that was taking place in that time. But we find it was in this place that something had happened just a little better than 30 years prior. And we find that it was in this place, the place called Nazareth, uh, that there was a virgin by the name of Mary. If you was to go to your Bibles in Luke chapter 1, 25 uh, through 35, uh, we, we find these words. And let me just jump through them very quickly. It says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin who was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came in unto her and said, Thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of solution this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call him his name Jesus. Notice it says he shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, amazing as this is, if you jump down to verse 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Notice with me. I know it's not Christmas yet. Even though my wife put up a Christmas tree, pray for her. She needs Jesus. Uh, but uh, we're a little early. But I'm not preaching a Christmas message this morning, but I could. But notice. 30 years prior to John chapter number 1, when Philip comes and tells Nathaniel, come, we found him, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Uh, and he says, come and see him. Uh, 
30 years prior to that, we find that the angel Gabriel comes and visits Nazareth, uh, and he begins to have a conversation with Mary and says, you're highly favored. Uh, and because of her obedience and willingness to the word of the Lord, uh, there was released at Nazareth, a place that everybody says, oh, there's nothing really there. It was a place of visitation uh, where according to the word of the Lord uh, that the Holy Spirit came down uh, and touched humanity in such a way uh, in this unexpected place uh, that the world was about to be changed forever. Uh, now, after 30 years, Jesus has been raised with his family, spent most of his childhood in Nazareth, uh, and he comes and gets ready to move into his earthly ministry. Uh, and one of the first things that he is faced with uh, is the place that he comes from, Nazareth. Uh, Philip and Nathaniel and everybody's talking about this man named Jesus, uh, but the first thing that's approached is, uh, towards him is, can anything good come from there? Uh, he was perceived to be, notice this, uh, from a place of nothing. Uh, he was from a place of lack by most men's standards. Uh, he was from a place of rejection by many's thought process. Uh, he was from a place of inadequacy. Uh, he was from a place uh, that the world did not fully understand or see as valuable. Uh, the one uh, that was about to turn water into wine, uh, the one that was about to heal the sick, that was about to deliver the captive, uh, the one that was, set, was about to set at liberty uh, those that was bound and bruised, uh, the one that was about to feed the 5,000, uh, the one that was about to make the lame leap, uh, the one that was about to make the dumb hear, uh, the one that was about to make blinded eyes see, uh, was emerging out of Nazareth, uh, and men are saying, can anything good come out of there? Uh, they had no idea uh, what was about to touch the earth uh, at this time in history. Uh, it was definitely an unexpected place, uh, but it was a place uh, that was about to touch the world. Uh, a little later, we find Jesus uh, have a private conversation uh, with his disciples. Uh, in Matthew chapter number 16, uh, Jesus says these words in verse 13 through 19. Uh, when Jesus come into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, uh, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say that you are John the Baptist, and some say you're Elias, and others, uh, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then he says, uh, but who do you say that I am? Uh, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for, for flesh and blood did not reveal it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You say, why is this important? How does this tie together? Notice Jesus, after he's walking with his disciples for an extended period of time, he simply says, do you really know who I am? Uh, who, who do you really think I am? Do you think I'm just Jesus uh, that was born in Nazareth, the son of Joseph? Or, 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 or who do you really think I am? But revelation comes to Simon, uh, and he simply says, Thou art the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. Notice with me, it is here in which the revelation of Christ is revealed, uh, and it is in Christ alone that the church was birthed. Uh, and now uh, I come back to uh, the question, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, can anything good come out of the church in the year 2020? Uh, now, I know that men have marred its image at times. Uh, I know that they've even tried to destroy it by any means necessary. Uh, I know that there are those today within this nation and around the globe uh, that mock it, that laugh at it, that belittle it. Uh, they discount it as worthless and insufficient. Uh, I know that it's even been hijacked by those within it. Uh, 
uh, where they've tried to change the identity and, and they've plagued it uh, with false teachings and schemes of all types of reissues uh, and sorts. Uh, but I stand here this morning uh, and tell you uh, that while there may be a church world that is a mess, uh, there is a church uh, that is still pure and powerful uh, and whose head is still Jesus Christ uh, and there is nothing uh, to be ashamed about when you say that I am part uh, of the blood-bought saints of God. Uh, but there is a church right now, please hear me, uh, that still has the ability to bind uh, and to loose. Uh, and the head of it uh, is not uh, in despair. Uh, but Jesus Christ this morning is still sitting on the right hand of the Father, uh, making intercessions for you and I. Uh, I want to serve notice to the devil this morning. Uh, the church of Jesus Christ is not on its last leg. Uh, it's not just trying to make it through, uh, but the church uh, is still triumphant. Uh, and the Lord began to put into my spirit in recent days uh, that in this season of uncertainty, uh, there is one thing that's about to be certain, uh, and that is the glory of the Lord uh, is coming back to the church. Uh, it is quite uh, the opposite right now of what most people think. Uh, can anything good come from her? Uh, I'm here to tell you, absolutely. Uh, we are getting clothed with the glory uh, of the Lord uh, in this moment. Uh, I believe while I'm speaking to you this morning uh, that there is beginning to be an experience of a latter rain across this nation uh, and across the nations of the world. Uh, the wind of the Spirit is now currently feeling uh, a freshness uh, in the houses of worship. Uh, I know by the world standard uh, that the church isn't relevant. Uh, they think that we're not essential. Uh, they think that we need to be closed down and we don't even need to be doing what we're doing right now, uh, trying to encourage one another. Uh, but I come to tell you this morning uh, that the world is getting ready to be surprised uh, by what comes out of the church. Uh, just like when Jesus emerged out of Nazareth, uh, they said, can anything good come from there? Uh, can I tell you, uh, everything began to be changed uh, as he began to walk notice with me. Uh, it was just a short time after he comes into contact with Nathaniel uh, and the others uh, that he finds himself in Canaan of Galilee uh, and water is turned to wine. There is some things that's getting ready to go through a turning. Uh, there's some things getting ready to go through a shifting uh, and a sifting. Uh, I know uh, that the world must just may just see some old broken water pots, uh, but inside the broken water pots of this hour, uh, there is something stirring. Uh, there is something moving, uh, and there is some new wine that's about to go forth. Uh, this morning, I want you to be encouraged in the middle of a pandemic, uh, in the middle of having to listen to this preacher at your home or wherever you may be uh, I want you to know that that which was law uh, that which she thought was uh, was no longer able to happen uh, in the past uh, concerning the church uh, can I tell you there is something fresh and new coming uh, and God is going to receive glory and honor uh, the wind of the spirit is feeling afresh even now uh, and the sound of triumph is about to come forth uh, from the church uh, I know that they say that she's no longer needed uh, she's no longer valuable uh, but this morning, can I tell you, the bride of Christ uh, is right now uh, about to meet the bridegroom, uh, and there is something in the atmosphere. Listen, uh, we are closer now than we've ever been. Uh, we do not have to worry uh, about what's going on around us. We don't have to worry about what's shaking around us uh, because our God, uh, he is still the God of the universe. Uh, he is still the one that is the beginning and the end. Uh, the church here me today is about to be exalted uh, and lifted high, uh, not because of our giftings and talents, uh, but because that the Lord uh, is faithful to those that will put their trust in him. Uh, that which is about to burst forth uh, from the church in the midst of evil, in the midst of darkness, uh, in the midst of death, uh, is the glorious light of the gospel, uh, and it is about to come forth from the church in such a manner uh, that the world once again 
man is going to see the glory of God. Uh, it is from an unexpected place, the church, uh, that this nation uh, is getting ready to witness a great disruption uh, that is going to give birth to a harvest of souls. Uh, I stand here this morning with confidence, uh, knowing this, uh, that our last hours are going to be greater uh, than our former. Uh, it is in this time that we must make a decision to stand up uh, and to be counted, uh, for we know that our hope in this hour uh, is not in government. Uh, it's not in the intellect of men, uh, but our hope this morning uh, is still in Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, that's why Galatians 5 tells us, stand fast, uh, therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Uh, I want to encourage you right now, as I did last week, uh, don't you be weary in well-doing. Uh, don't you be distracted. Uh, don't be discouraged by what you see taking place around us. Uh, but know this, uh, that Jesus Christ, uh, the head of the church, uh, he is still all power. Uh, he is still all authority. Uh, I got to remind you in Romans chapter 11, verse 33, uh, says, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Uh, how unsearchable are his judgments uh, and his ways past finding out. Uh, you may think everything's out of control right now. <coughs> Excuse me. But this morning, please know uh, that God's ways are higher than our ways. Uh, his, his, uh, his understanding is so much beyond our understanding. Uh, but notice if you go on in 34 and 35 of this uh, chapter in Romans 11, uh, it says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, uh, or who hath been his counselor? Uh, Oh, and his ways are past finding out, yes, but or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Uh, notice with me, uh, his wisdom, his knowledge, uh, he, they're unsearchable, uh, but his ways, please hear me, uh, are something that we can take refuge in and comfort in. Uh, I read a story recently of a lady that went through great loss, uh, losing her child, uh, and she was disturbed and she was unsettled, uh, and she felt like that her relationship with God uh, was just, uh, just hanging by a thread, but she received a card from a friend and it simply said these words, uh, when God conceals his purposes uh, keep living in his promises. Uh, can I tell you, we don't always know how God is moving uh, but we do know this, that his promises are yea and amen to them that believe uh, and his word says I'll never leave you, never forsake you uh, and he simply says this, I still choose to use the church uh, in this hour. I know that there are those today around us that may think uh, that, well, the church really uh, isn't all that important. Uh, but can I tell you this morning, uh, the church of Jesus Christ uh, is, a, is the avenue that God is using uh, and in getting ready to use in a great and mighty way right now uh, in our nation as well as the nations of the world. Uh, and as we've been in prayer together over the last few days, uh, I'm going to ask you to continue to join me in prayer uh, because it is out of this unexpected place uh, where I do believe that there is something stirring uh, and something moving that's about to come forth. Uh, I'm reminded that just a little over 100 years ago uh, that William Seymour and others, they stood and they said, in about 100 years, uh, there's going to be a move of God uh, that comes uh, that's going to make everything we've seen up to this point pale in comparison. Uh, it's been about 100 years since Azusa Street. Uh, and I'm here to tell you this morning, uh, yes, there's war and there's evil. Uh, yes, there's a struggle between good and evil right now. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that good is going to prevail uh, because greater is he that is in you, the church, uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, and we got to stand with confidence and know uh, that no weapon formed against us can prosper. Uh, we may seem like uh, that we're overwhelmed right now, uh, but I want to tell somebody right now in the midst of your weariness, uh, in the midst of 
of your uncertainty. Uh, there is a God that's saying, I am faithful. Uh, there's a God that's saying, I, my hand is not shortened that it can't reach you. Uh, but right where you are this morning, uh, in the midst of everything, notice uh, uh, Paul said to Timothy in chapter number 3 of 2 Timothy, uh, he said this no also, uh, that yes, in the last days perilous times will come. Uh, men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, uh, having a form of godliness, uh, but denying the power thereof. Uh, Paul said, turn away from that. Uh, but we also find that when that is taking place in the earth, uh, that when Peter stood at the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, 17 through 21, when he addressed the crowd that day, uh, and he simply said, this is that which the prophet Joel had spoke of and prophesied. He said, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, uh, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days uh, of my spirit that they shall prophesy. Can I tell you, we are not just in the last days, church, uh, but we are in the last moments of the last days. And we got to begin to look up for our redemption draws nigh. Uh, this is not a time to be overwhelmed and full of doom and gloom, uh, but we're about to see Jesus this morning uh, face to face, uh, and it is out of this unexpected place, the church, uh, that the world is about to have an encounter with God. Uh, so you may ask the question, can anything good come out of her? Absolutely. There is about to be a sound of triumph this morning that comes uh, to this nation from the church. Uh, can I tell you, darkness is about to be dispelled uh, and light is about to burst forth in the lives and in the families, in the situations. Uh, I believe that there's about to be uh, not just the shaking of the heavenlies, uh, but there is about to be a manifestation of the glory and the power of God uh, in this season. Uh, you say, so what should I do right now, Pastor? Uh, I would say to you, be encouraged. Uh, begin to give God a shout of praise. Uh, begin to magnify his name uh, because as we give in to him uh, and we surrender to him, uh, the word is still established, uh, and that is he inhabits the praise of his people, uh, meaning this, he begins to dwell. He takes an abode with us, uh, and in this season, he wants to dwell with you. Uh, he wants to dwell with me, uh, and therefore, in his presence, uh, there is fullness of joy. Uh, I know the world is crazy right now, uh, but can I tell you, the remnant of God's people uh, is about to experience the joy that passes all understanding, uh, and the peace that passes all understanding. Uh, we're about to be reunited in the spiritual realm uh, with the Holy Spirit uh, where a wind of refreshing uh, is coming. And I want to speak that over your home. Uh, I want to speak that over your life even now this morning. Uh, I'm not going to keep you much longer this morning. Uh, but I want to speak into your life. Uh, I want to speak to that darkness and tell it it has to dispel uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to speak to that weight that may be trying to beset you uh, and tell you that it can no longer stay uh, because in this season uh, God is coming forth uh, much like when he stepped out of Nazareth and, and Nathaniel said can anything good come out of there? Uh, Philip said won't you come and see for yourself? Uh, maybe you've not been in the church lately. Uh, maybe you've been hurt by a church or whatever back there uh, but I want to give you a fresh invitation. Uh, won't you come and see Jesus for yourself? Uh, in this season. Uh, listen, this isn't about religious rhetoric, uh, but this is about experiencing his presence. Uh, and I believe as we come back to the church, uh, even as we come back into this house next weekend, uh, I'm here to tell you I'm believing and trusting uh, for the presence of God to be greater uh, than it has been all year. Uh, I know we've been experiencing a move of God, uh, but church, you hear me. Uh, when we come back into this house, uh, I'm believing for the presence of God uh, to saturate it in such a manner uh, that there's about to be strongholds broken. Uh, there's about to be generational curses broken. Uh, there's about to be prodigal sons come running uh, to the house of the Lord. You may this not come by yourself next weekend uh, because I believe that there's some folks getting ready to come and see. Uh, and when they come and see, uh, they are going to taste uh, and they are going to see that he's good uh, and that he is faithful. Uh, right there in your home this morning, uh, I'd 
I'd encourage you just to give God a shout of praise this morning uh, because it is out of the unexpected place uh, that God is about to raise up uh, and there is about to bear to be to be a glorious uh, return of his presence in this house. Right where you are this morning, in a state of weariness, state of uncertainty, a state of maybe sickness this morning, know this, God is faithful. Nathaniel, come and see. We have found him. Can I tell you this morning, I'm not excited today just because I read a story, but I'm excited today because I have tasted and I have seen that he is good. I have met this man, Jesus, from Nazareth. Not only have I met him, but he lives and dwells inside of me. And he has been my comforter. He has been my strength. He has been my strong tower. He has been the place that I have ran into. He has been faithful to me. Hear this preacher this morning. Can anything good Come, yes, uh, because he is good. Uh, not just sometimes, uh, but all the time. Uh, so this morning, uh, while the world is going crazy, uh, one thing you can take comfort in knowing, that God is in control today. And it is out of the unexpected place called the church, in this season, in this moment of time in history, that I believe that God is about to emerge from it in a manner where it's not just going to touch those inside the walls of a building, but communities, cities, states, and nations is getting ready to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. This morning, we are just a couple of days away from a very pivotal election in this nation. And we are seeing lots of activity. And as I shared with you last week, I believe that God is getting ready to do something. And I believe that it's going to not just touch the political realm, but it's touching the houses of worship. It's touching the hearts of men and women in a very unique way. So I want to encourage you this morning to know this, that while the church may not be the place that many are focused on today, it is the place that he's focused on. And it is the place that he's getting ready to be in a very unique manner moving and shifting and stirring some things that is going to ultimately impact every other avenue of life in this nation as well as the nations of the world. Please hear me this morning. Yes, we understand that we're in perilous times. Yes, we understand we're in a time when it seems like men are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yes, it seems like that we're in the beginning of sorrows where we're seeing wars and rumors of wars and all these things taking place. Yes, I understand that. But we are also in a time that the prophets have written about where there would be an outpouring, where there would be a coming together of the former and the latter in such a manner that there would begin to be just a wave of the Holy Spirit that would begin to touch the hearts of humanity. This morning, I believe that we're on the brink of seeing a harvest. Yes, I understand that there's a falling away, but there is a harvest that's getting ready to be brought in if we will just stay faithful and trust in Jesus right now. I know this is a very simple word this morning. But just like Nathaniel said, can there any good thing come from Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. This pastor this morning is just simply saying, come and see. Just come and see. Maybe you're not serving the Lord right now. Maybe you've went wayward. Maybe you're watching us this morning and, and you just feel like everything's crashing in on you and you've tried everything. Can I tell you, try Jesus. Because right now, it is Him. It is Him. That is our source and our strength. And right where you're at this morning, notice he loves you. He cares for you. And he desires to dwell with you. And he desires for you to dwell with him. Listen, there is no such thing as a perfect church in the world's standard. And by coming, when I say a church, uh, you can go to any house of worship. It's made up of imperfect people. Listen. We all have our flaws and we all have our error, but the church of Jesus Christ, 
the blood bought church, it is pure. Our hearts are pure. Our motives are pure. Our desire to be in His presence is pure. And the true church, listen, yes, we, may, we, we fall and, and we come up short, but our hearts are turned towards Him. And, and because of that, he says, I, I see there's no gall in you. And he, he blesses us with his presence. He blesses us with his spirit. And therefore, we are able to operate by and through the unction of the Holy Spirit. And we can, we can as he told his disciples, you can bind and loose things. Meaning this, you can live a life of authority. We don't have to settle for everything that the enemy throws our way. But we can still today in the year 2020 raise up a standard against the enemy and he must flee and how do we do that we do that in faith and this morning i'm just asking you to stir up that faith that's inside of you and know this that it is in this season in this time out of the church that god is getting ready to bring forth a freshness and this morning we need to be encouraged we need to be found faithful and we need to not be weary but we need to be standing strong and standing fast in the things of God because He is faithful. And I'm believing for your children. I'm believing for your grandchildren. I'm believing for our community and our state as well as our nation. And I'm encouraging you today to continue to pray and join me because it is out of this unexpected place, the church, that God is about to show Himself and He's getting ready to touch a world. And we get to be part of it. Isn't that exciting? We get to be part of what God's getting ready to do in the earth. So don't be discouraged this morning, but be encouraged and know this, that God loves you, and he's desiring to use you and go through and move through you in a very unique and special way in this season. And I'm so thankful that he's willing to use men and women just like you and I. Amen? I want to pray with you this morning right where you are. The church family. We just want to pray a blessing over you. But the others that are joining, we want to pray a blessing over you. But those that may be battling this morning, I just kind of feel drawn to maybe the backslider this morning or the one that's went wayward, or maybe the one that's just discouraged today. I just, I just feel drawn to you this morning. And I want you to know that God loves you. This preacher loves you. This church family loves you. And, and you don't have to go through what you're going through alone. But you just got to call out to Jesus. Maybe you don't have enough energy to say anything other than Jesus, but when you just call his name this morning right where you are, I'm believing and trusting for his arms of love just to wrap around you. And right now, I'm believing for healing. I'm believing for restoration. And I'm believing for the joy of the Lord just to come. And I'm just praying right now for the fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come to you and to your house right where you are. And we just want to pray together with you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this privilege to come into the home of these men and women just for a few moments today. Lord, I pray that through my limited ability today to deliver, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just take the words that I've shared and that they would not just hear me, but that they would hear your heart, they would hear your word, and they would know that right now that there is something coming forth in this season out of the church and Lord it is a message of hope it's a message of deliverance Lord it is a message of restoration and Lord it is also a message of healing and deliverance and Lord I pray right now for the one that may be watching that may be struggling Lord I pray that you would give them peace pray that you give them rest I pray that salvation would just uh, come to the one right now that would just simply say Lord forgive me I'm a sinner and Lord, I pray that maybe the one that's discouraged, Lord, that there would just be a, uh, uh, your arms would just wrap around me and they'd feel your love and that there would just be encouragement brought right now knowing this, that they're not alone, but that you are faithful to them. And Father, for those that's battling sickness this morning, those that's suffering loss in their families today, Lord, I just want to take a moment and pray especially for them. And Lord, I pray that you would be their comforter, that you would be their strength, and Lord, as they lean on you this morning, I pray that the weight would just be lifted this morning and that they would feel your presence right now. And Lord, we pray this in the name that's above every name, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the church says, Amen and Amen. Well, God bless you this morning. I pray that we've been a blessing to you. I apologize for the rough voice and a little bit of a head cold this morning. 
But I, I pray that you will just be encouraged and know this, that just like Jesus coming out, and he, coming out of Nazareth that touched the world at that time, he's still coming and using his church and coming afresh through it. And there is getting ready to be some things to celebrate in this nation as well as the nations of the world. Amen. I want to invite you to join us Wednesday night on our social media platform, 7 o'clock. Me and Pastor Jade will be together in this house. But then next Sunday, uh, we will be back in the house of the Lord for in-person service, 1030. You want to make plans to be here and join us for that. And uh, please share that uh, on all of your social platforms, and we'll be sharing that throughout the week as well. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer. Uh, for our church family and those across our community uh, and across our nation as well as the nations of the world that's really battling this virus at this season. We're believing and trusting God to, to do what needs to be done concerning that. As I mentioned earlier, we are just a couple days away from a very pivotal time in our nation, so please be praying for our leaders. Please be praying for our nation. Pray for just a calm and a peace uh, over the next few days. And, uh, I know evil would love to cause chaos, but I'm believing and I'm speaking a calm, and I'm speaking that the Lord is going to receive glory and honor in the next few days. So uh, continue to join with us and pray with us, uh, and may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may he shine brightly upon you, give you blessed peace. We love you, we appreciate you, we miss you this morning, but know this, that we're praying for you, and we love you, and... Uh, God bless you today. Have a great day in the Lord, and have a great week. And we'll see you next Sunday in this house, in person. But join us midweek, 7 o'clock online. Hey, everybody. This is Pastor Jade Abrams. I want to thank you for watching today. Feel free to find us on Facebook and Instagram and follow us and get to know us a little better. And we ask that you subscribe if you'd like to this YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell for alerts anytime we post something new. We love you, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Have a good day.